Right, so a confession to make. That was actually stock footage. It's December here in the UK and it is absolutely freezing and the wind's blowing and it's not long stopped raining. So I actually forgot to post this tutorial back in the summer. What? But hey, nothing like being prepared for next year. So here in advance of next summer is a really quick and easy technique to show how you can remove sunburnt skin using Photoshop. Now for this technique, I want to show you how you can quickly remove something like sunburn using what would ordinarily be viewed as quite a basic adjustment and that's the hue and saturation. So here we've got our image with our rather painful looking sunburn. So let's now go over to the adjustments in the top right hand corner and choose the hue and saturation adjustment layer. In here we have the properties where it's set to master, but if we now choose reds, in the bottom here where we've got this kind of stretched out colour wheel, we've got these markers. And in between the outer markers is what Photoshop is saying are the range of reds that we can now affect. But obviously I don't know if that range there is correct and is what the actual sunburn is made up of. So what we'll do is we'll get one of the outer markers, I'll go for the left hand one, click and drag it over so that all of the markers are now bunched up together. I'll then get the plus sampler just here, bring my cursor over into the image, click, press down and drag over the area of the sunburn, like so. And as I do that, what you'll notice is that the actual markers themselves, they do start to uh, separate so that they're kind of including more reds, which are more representative of what we need to change. So now that we've got that, Let's just check to see if it's going to be correctly positioned now, these little markers. And we can do that by temporarily increasing the saturation. So let's take it all the way to 100. Anywhere now that's between this area is going to be really saturated. But obviously because we're using skin, we would kind of expect everywhere else to be saturated as well. So what we'll do now then, just to position it even more to really finesse the area, is put our cursor in between these markers, click and drag across to start to bring it away so that we can see now there we go somewhere about there let's have a look about there is really including the area of the arm and the neck so we'll kind of leave it there take the saturation back to zero now we don't need to have that there now that we know these markers are correctly positioned we can come in and start to remove the red and it's pretty much like when you mix paints if you want to reduce a colour, you add the opposite colour. So in this case, we have red, green and blue on one side. On the opposite side, we have cyan, magenta, yellow and of course black. So all I'm going to do to reduce the reds is to add in some cyan. So I come over to the hue slider, click and drag over to the right and slowly start to increase how much cyan is coming in. And that's going to reduce that red for us just about there. We've got to really eyeball this now. So we'll go for something like that. We can then come down to the saturation slider. Let's take that to about there. We can also play around with the lightness if we like as well. Now the trick with this is, because obviously if you'll find yourself staring at the image, you're going to really see every change that you do. So I would suggest that you look away from the screen momentarily then look back, look away, look back, and then you'll be able to see really what it is that you're doing. Because at the moment, if you're just staring at it, you'll notice everything. So let's just go for there and just play around with that hue slider just a little bit more. Maybe something like that will do for now. Next thing I'll do, I can see these real obvious areas where the burnt area of skin met the non-burnt area of skin. So we just need to reduce that a little bit. We can do that by adding a new blank layer. And I'm going to choose the patch tool. So come up to the toolbar. I'll choose the patch tool here and in the options at the top of the screen where it says patch I'm going to leave that set to content aware structure color and then we've got all uh, sample all layers well I'm going to make sure there's a tick in the sample all layers checkbox because we're now using a blank layer where there's no pixels so it needs to be able to know that it can use pixels underneath it so we'll put a tick in there structure and color is really really important now we're working on skin the structure itself can go from one all the way through to seven I would suggest when we're working on skin, we keep the structure as slow as possible. So I'm going to keep it at one. And the color can go from zero all the way to 10. 
and I'm going to kind of keep that maybe midway. And that's going to help when we use the patch tool to bring in colors to cover over areas with the matching color around it. So let's just zoom in. Let's go for this area here. And I'll just make a very loose selection, click and drag that onto another area. You can see now it does a really good job of filling those patches in just there, just to blend it in. All right, go to here, like so, and that little bit at the top, like so. Now I'm just going to quickly work my way around this image just to get rid of this dividing line. So rather than you sit in there, let me just quickly zoom forward. All right, so now that we've done that, that's actually reduced it quite a lot. Let's have a quick look here. Put my cursor underneath the eye icon on the original background layer and hold down the option key on Mac or key on Windows, press down so we can see the before and after. And if that's not perfect how you want it to be, you could then add in some extra color by adding another blank layer. We'll get a brush. Let's make sure that the brush is on 0% hardness. And then all we'll do is we'll bring our brush over onto our image, hold down the Option key on Mac, Alt key on Windows to sample just a little bit of that skin color. And then in the options by the top of the screen, I'm going to set the flow to around about 20 so that I can just paint and brush over lightly. Now, when you do that, you're going to actually paint over the area of the skin and just completely cover it. So you're missing all the texture. So to have only the color showing, but to keep all the texture of the skin, we'll come over to the layers panel and we'll change the blend mode of this layer from normal down to color. So you can see now there's the textures. So see here, no texture. Sorry, there's texture. If we take it to normal, no texture. So color just does that, only reveals the color on that particular um, layer. So let's just paint around nice and gently, build it up like so on the image like that. So it's a nice quick way that we can reduce uh, discoloration on a skin like sunburn. If we do the before and after, you can see now it's like, ouch, that's really painful. We can go before, after, before and after. So a really quick way that we can use what would ordinarily be considered a really basic adjustment like the hue and saturation, but just by diving into those settings there and bunching those little markers up, we can really target specific color within an image and then make some adjustments. <laughs> so there you go then, that's just one way that you can remove sunburn in Photoshop. God, it's cold out there. Uh, it's not your high-end beauty retouching pixel peeping kind of technique but it'll pretty much get you there 99% of the time. So if you found this in any way helpful or useful, just click on the old thumbs up, that's always a help. And uh, if you haven't already, click on the subscribe button. That's just a great free way that you can support this channel. But uh, that's it, I'm done. I'm gonna turn the heating on in this car. I've got a coffee to warm up and I'll see you next week. Bye.